Number 48. On a hot summer day, four times 10 to the six joules of heat transfer into a parked car takes place, increasing its temperature from 35 degrees Celsius to 45 degrees Celsius. What is the increase in entropy of the car? All right. Um, so basically, we have to use this formula down here on the bottom right. It says that, that the change in entropy of a system, okay, is going to be equal to, it doesn't tell us the change in heat transfer, but basically that's what they, what the formula implies. The change in heat transfer into or out of the system divided by then the absolute temperature of that system. Okay, this is fairly straightforward. Now, two complications here is that they tell us we're talking about one system. We're talking about inside of the car, but the car has two temperatures. So what do we do? Well, one way to get around that is to try to take the average of these two temperatures. All right. In other words, we're trying to find like the average entropy change, more or less. Okay. So I can just, in my formula here, I'm going to write a little AVG, average. All right. We, we cannot look at this as uh, the total entropy change where there's a hot reservoir and a cold reservoir or something like that, uh, just because we're talking about inside of the parked car. It's the same environment. So I can't look at this as like, you know, some cold environment and this is some hot environment because it's the same thing. It's just a changing temperature. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. Now, when I'm thinking about this, the heat energy changed. Is the heat energy added to the car or subtracted from the car? Meaning, does heat move into the car or out of the car? Right? In other words, I'm using a lot of, a lot of in other words. In other words, be very specific when you're talking about this. Uh, change in entropy of the car is going to be equal to the change in heat energy added or subtracted from the car divided by the temperature of the car. Okay? That should hopefully focus uh, you a little bit. Um, on trying to understand, you know, what the important values are. So the change in energy, the change in heat energy, uh, excuse me, that the car experienced was a gain because the heat energy was added, it says, transfer into. So that's going to be a positive value. So that's 4 times 10 to the 6th, then divided by the temperature of the car. And that's kind of where I'm thinking about, right, average temperature. What's the temperature of the car? Well, it has two different temperatures at two different points in time. So I'm just going to simply take an average, all right? And when we take an average, you know that it's basically you add the two values together and then divide it by the number of values you have, assuming it's an equally weighted average, which we should in this case. Um, so just remember that it's we have to have this both in ter excuse me in terms of Kelvin. All right, so there's going to be th uh, let me just do that on the side, right? So that's 35 plus then the 273, 273, right? So when we add them together, that's eight, so that's 308, right? And then if I do the other one, 273 plus then 45, oops, 45, that's going to be 318 now. Okay, so those are the two temperatures. You might even be able to find the average already. Right from that, you're just trying to find what's the middle point, okay? And you might have come up with, what do you think? Well, you can also do the math here if you're not sure, right? 308 plus then 318, and then divide that whole thing by two. Actually, you know what? I'll do that on the side here. 308, so just add these two together and then divide it by 2, all right? Take out the handy-dandy calculator. I'm even going to plug it in. 308 plus 318, and then divide that by 2. Oh, 313. Interesting, right? And if you notice, 313 is exactly perfectly positioned between these two values, right? The difference of 5 on both sides. So that's the value we're going to plug in, 313. And voila, let's do it. So 4 times 10 to the 6 divided by then that value... And we get an approximate answer of about 1.28 times 10 raised to the 3, 4. And that's uh, entropy joules per Kelvin. Okay, joules per Kelvin. That's entropy. All right, guys. Thank you so very much for tuning in. Please remember to help us out and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Take care.